What is up guys, welcome back to a brand new video and today I'm going to be doing my volume 7 review for The Promised Neverland It'll probably be a bit of a quicker video today because there's not really too much uh, to talk about within this volume Not too many developments realistically So it'll probably be shorter than some of the other volume reviews because it's not as detailed a volume as some of the previous ones uh, But I didn't want to get this out because volume is going to be out one or two days here in the UK so I'm very excited to uh, read that as although uh, there's not really too much content to talk about in this volume the endings as is the case with most of the Promised Neverland volumes leave a lot to be desired for the next one because of their cliffhangers which they do do in a lot of uh, the volumes leading up to this so yeah I'll be talking about chapters 53 through 61 I believe yeah in this volume so if you haven't read that then I advise not to watch this because I'll be spoiling a few stuff that happens within this volume uh, so I can give a more detailed analysis of what I thought of it this is most likely season 2 content so you'll be seeing that in terms of the anime for probably another year or so so yeah let's yeah, just get straight into it uh, this volume is very much about building up for the new arc, kind of introducing this new character here, uh, who doesn't really have, he doesn't give his name throughout the volume. It's m mostly just about introducing him, who, after the end of volume six, we believe is William Minerva, but who turns out not to be. Uh, and it is mostly just about what's going to be happening next arc, their reasons for doing what they're doing, and introducing this brand new character here. Uh, and that's yeah, mostly what the volume is. You learn a bit of backstory about the place, uh, but not really too much. This character is a interesting character to be introduced. Somebody that doesn't really care if the kids die or not, but actually more than likely wants them dead when they go out on their mission uh, because he want, he thinks that he can survive by himself in this place where where he was left or where he went after all his his team and companions died after they escaped from their individual uh, house that they were being locked in but as a character he seems quite interesting my theory on it is that he'll probably end up dying protecting the kids after realising that maybe what he's doing up to this point is wrong but that's just something that I guess and everything that's happened to Promise Neverland so far has been very out of the ordinary in terms of showing it so that's probably not what it will come to pass but just, uh, I guess. And we kind of see a pretty badass scene from Gilda at the end here where she threatens the guy. Which is uh, pretty cool to see. It's always nice to have character progression and not left, not have characters left kind of behind. Uh, and there's 15 of the kids now. So I guess that would mean that there's more room for progression for each of them. And now that Emma and Ray have gone off to do their own thing with this guy, uh, it will even give more room for the kids that are left in the house, Don and Gilda, probably, most importantly, uh, to be able to keep that running and sustain it, whilst these three are out looking for the actual location of William and Eva. And I feel like that arc will probably go to probably volume 10 or 11. And I've heard that the second arc in the series isn't as good as the first one, so I'm hoping that, that people are wrong about that and it does sustain its quality because it does seem like an interesting arc and I'm very curious to see this William Minerva character. Uh, the art in here is pretty uh, standard Promise Neverland art. I'm a big fan of it, it's very unique art and I really do want to get the art book by uh, Demizu, I think is how you say it. Uh, and because that art book looks really nice. Uh, and other than that, the probably best moment in this is them getting the guns because I've seen uh, Emma, uh, Emma's ray gun thing and Norman's uh, small AK on a few of the later covers I'm pretty sure it's on the cover for 8 as well and uh, I was just wondering, wondering when they would get them and it's going to be pretty cool to see them using them later on in the series and as for the volume end they're pretty much just in some trouble uh, caused by this guy in, a, in a, basically an attempt to kill them 
but in a way that he doesn't take the blame for it. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much this volume overview. I don't want to say it's exactly what happens in the volume. I'll leave some stuff for you to find out yourself. But it was it was enjoyable as usual. The Promised Neverland just didn't do anything spectacular, other than maybe the destruction of the guns. But I did see that coming. Uh, other than that, nothing spectacular in this volume. Just the cat, just the usual enjoyment I get from the Promised Neverland. So nothing that they did wrong. But again, nothing spectacularly new that they've introduced. Uh, I, I look forward to this next arc to come. There will definitely be a lot more action-packed volumes to come. As again, this is a lot more of kind of character building for the brand new character and a little bit of backstory on the world and what this guy knows about everything. Uh, so it was another one of those just volumes where, because Promise Neverland is a series similar to stuff like Death Note, where everything's very thought through and plans are very detailed, it takes a long time to kind of write up the methods and what's going to happen and that just takes up a lot of panel time and this volume is kind of an example of that but there will definitely be more action packed things to come so I'll probably give this volume a 3 out of 5 nothing amazing in it but nothing terrible really looking forward to Twitch Promise Neverland and the anime is also amazing hopefully you guys have a great day and peace